Okay, I think I did it. Oh, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. I'm finishing my pancake. <laughs> I'm always late. I'm going to have to work on that. Anywho, yeah, so I was starting up the, you know, software or whatever. And my, hi, Carla. My computer just, like, completely crashed. And, well, it didn't actually crash. It just, like, went black. And, you know. Hi, Grace. I know. <laughs> I know. And then Sunday. Oh, my God. Sunday was a whole other thing. Oh, ha, ha, that's funny, Rhonda. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi, Ann. How's it going? Hi, Deb. I'm working my way backwards. <laughs> Oh, man. <clears throat> what are you guys doing? Are you staying out of trouble? Hi, Angela. <laughs> I did it. Sorry, but my son made pancakes. And I had told him I didn't want any, and then they smelled really good. So I couldn't pass it up. Watching. Oh, that's funny. Is this Bonnie of Bonnie and Clive then? That's funny, Deb. What is... What is... Marmalade? I mean, that's not funny. I don't know what I'm talking about. Hi, Lisa. Oh, you're punching out things, Carla. I said hi already. I'm sorry. I'm a dingling. Um... <laughs> Hi, Regina. Making food. Planner journal. Taking me. Oh, my gosh. Ann said she's making a food planner journal, and it's taken her over a month and a half. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Mmm. Carla's still working on that micro mini, huh? Hmm. What the hell you been doing? Oh, right on. 15 clusters. Good job, Rhonda. Um. Okay, I'm done eating. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um. Yeah, so Laura, um, Laura is one of our, our other, like, moderators, um, Laura Vasquez. She, um, she's turned into the official cluster queen. I don't know if you guys know that, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, crazy. And tiles. So her, it's her, um, 37th anniversary today, wedding anniversary today. And so she sent me a text this morning and, sent me some pictures that, um, <laughs> she's so, super funny. Hi, Brenda. Um, she's made so many clusters. Seriously. Laura has, it's, it's crazy. Um, and she'll admit it, but, um, she's also done a lot of tiles and, um, yeah, so it was really cute. Her husband, um, made a, um, mouse pad. I, I don't know if he used a picture of her tiles or if he used the actual tiles, but he did a, um, he made a mouse pad out of an image of her tiles, like all together, you know, really cool. And then, so I guess for her anniversary, um, present that he like left somewhere for her, you know, kind of like, oh, here, you know, instead of, he just like left it for her to find it, you know, um, he made her a, a coaster, so that because she likes to have champagne, you know, while she's, while she's crafting or during the live stream, which is why she's so, you know, belligerent now and then, but, um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so he made her the mouse pad and it's, 
and I'll send you, I'll put the picture of it in the uh, group. It's really cool. He's really a sweet guy. He'll like, he'll do things like serve her, you know, chocolate and strawberries and champagne while she's, you know, watching my live stream and stuff. She's, it's really funny. Anywho, um, so I had a custom journal that I was, uh, working on and <clears throat> I really kind of struggled with it. I'm not going to show it to you guys right now because I haven't, um, sent it to her and, sh and the lady that requested it, um, she's like on vacation or something right now. And so I can't really talk to her at the moment to ask her, um, if she minds if I, you know, share it. Um, I mean, I can do what I want, right. But, um, I kind of want to respect that cause I don't want her to like accidentally see it, you know, <laughs> before she gets it. So, um, anyways, um, so I've been kind of, I don't know, sort of bogged down with that in my head, you know, and, um, <clears throat> I know, right, Carla? Yeah, he's, um, her, she has a really sweet husband. So anyways, that has kind of been bogging me down the last few days because I decided that I really don't like doing custom orders, honestly. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I, it's hard to explain, but, um, yeah, that'd be sweet, wouldn't it? And is it, it's Bonnie, right? I'm assuming Bonnie and Clive, you would be Bonnie. Um, hi, Sandra. Hi, Judy. So anyways, I got everything kind of cleaned up from working on that. And, um, it's like a, she wanted like a sort of like Lord of the Rings, uh, sort of style. And she wanted it with a lot of like, um, metallic elements and stuff like that. So it actually turned out pretty cool. It's a huge journal, but, but I'm happy with it anyway. So I wasn't sure what to start working on. Um, and when I get to that point, what I do is I start organizing and, um, just going through, you know, boxes and, um, looking at stuff, you know, so, I, I, I'm like a huge Lord of the Rings fan in case nobody knows that I'm, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. And so are most of my kids. And we quote, uh, Gollum, um, on a regular basis and anybody else too. So I have a son named Samuel and, um, often times I call him Samwise. So anyway, so one of the things that I found that I'd like to like to work on maybe is um these little these little guys. Um it's just like a little frame, you know, with a piece of acetate and a little image um behind it. Um, a lot of the ones that I made actually are solid on the back. This one is not, um, I could put something on the back of that so that it wouldn't have that, you know, opening, but I like to tuck these into pockets and stuff or make them into little, um, tuck spots or even sometimes like part of a cluster, you know, and it's a great way to use, uh, little tiny images. And so I save a lot of, um, just little, little teeny images, uh, to use on tiles and, you know, other stuff like that. But, um, so I thought I'd like to maybe make some of those today. And so when I'm looking at images, um, Okay, here's what I'm trying to say. A lot of times I don't care, like, if I get the whole image in the frame, um, like, you know, like this. Like, it doesn't, like, completely fit in there, but it gets, like, the basic part of it. You know what I mean? Um, 
yeah, like I don't care if it if it cuts off just a little bit. And so I thought I'd, you know, use some of these little guys. Like here's a little teeny tiny one that I did. This one doesn't have the acetate in it. It's just the the paper, you know. Um and the it's just cardstock, you know. Um some of them are actually watercolor paper. Like this is coffee dyed watercolor paper. Um, but I've used some images out of like the Tim Holtz papers and another kind of cool thing to use those, uh, you know, from the packaging or from like um, calendars, you know, the the little example images that you get on the back of a calendar. This picture of my dad and just these are just little images that I've scanned and then uh, reprinted. So, yeah, so they're kind of fun. And... Um, so I made a whole bunch of the little frames while I was at work and, but I thought, okay, so I had bought these, these little, I think this is one of them. Yeah, I had bought these, um, and I don't know what you call it, but like a, uh, it's like a slide frame. Yeah, I don't, I didn't use a punch, no. I actually used an X-Acto knife. <laughs> um, but I did trace it with this. So basically, you know, it would be just a square or just a rectangle. And then, you know, you would create um, like a half inch border all the way around. Just measure down however large you want to make it, you know, and then measure down a half inch and then half inch and then just draw your lines in and then um, if you didn't have one of these to make a template with um, you could do that so with this you could actually do like acetate two let two layers of acetate and then you know you could sandwich something in there like um, you know a pressed flower or um, you could print an image and then flip it um, and Jibid Neary, she does this. Um, hi, Louise. <laughs> um, she does something really similar to this. You know, she does a lot with um, tracing paper and layering things in between layers of, you know, tracing paper and stuff like that. And she did some little, like, microscope slides, you know. And so what she suggested was if you want to print an image and you want... Like, say you wanted to have it inside here, um, and then you want to be able to see it from both sides. So what she does is she'll print it out, and then she'll flip it. She'll flip the image um, in the software or whatever printing program she's using. She'll flip that image. And then, um, and if you've never done that before, basically all you do is you right-click on the image, and then their little menu comes up. You can click Flip, and it'll just flip it over. Um, and then prints out the opposite um, side and then she'll fussy cut them and put them both together, glue them together so that it's the exact same on the other side. And it were and the reason you have to do that is because this isn't like perfectly symmetrical, right? So if you just printed two, cut them out, it would it, they wouldn't match up correctly. So I'm not going to do that, but um, that's what Jibid Neary she she suggests doing that. So anyway. Yeah, a pressed flower would be really pretty because you could see the back of the flower too, you know. And I actually pressed a whole bunch of uh, like little Johnny Jump Ups and um, little teeny tiny flowers. So, yeah, and it's just, you know, sometimes I like to do little tedious things, little, little detailed uh, kind of things, you know. So, excuse me, <laughs> I made another one, little, little tiny ones, um, a bunch of those while I was at work and then I think I did yeah two different sizes so I actually have three sizes that I kind of work with and um, yeah so this is a picture of my dad's cousin so and then I have a whole bunch of little tiny pieces of um, acetate that I've already uh, cut out so I want to make some of these I was going to just, you know, try to work on making some little mini envelopes. Um, and I still might do that, but I wanted to make some with a window, you know, 
um, kind of like this. Like this has an has a window, and um, I don't know where I got this in some postage stamps that I ordered or something. Um, so I'd like to do this too, and and um, you know put an image in there behind the acetate or um, you know some other kind of you know clear plastic or whatever. So I get acetate at um, I buy it at Michaels, and I buy this Duralar. Um, and it's, it's heat resistant, so you could actually emboss on this. You could do embossing on here. Um, and, um, it's not super cheap. I mean, I think this package is, let's see how many sheets are in here. 25 sheets. I think it's like, I want to say it's close to $20 or something. Um, but if you use a, you can use a coupon and get it for less than that. But, um, yeah, so I like that brand. <clears throat> and then I have all of these. I got this. Um, oh, do you guys want to see what I got? I got a whole bunch of fabric. Do you guys want to see it? <laughs> I'm not going to show you, like, every piece of it. But I hit the mother load of um, upholstery fabric samples the other day. No, I'm not going to do that right now. But anyways, I went to the thrift store yesterday. <laughs> you want me to show you? I'll show you. I'll show you what it, it basically what I wound up with. Okay. Hold on. And I got a whole bunch of books and stuff like that at this one thrift store that I go to. It's like my favorite thrift store. Um, <clears throat> they do a 30% off on, t on Tuesdays of their like collectible stuff. You know, it's like stuff that they have in their cases and, and everything. Anyways, um, this stuff was not 30% off, but all of the books that I got were. So just tons of upholstery fabrics. And they were all taken apart already, so they were not in the books, and they were sorted by color. <laughs> so, and then, like, all this different, you know, styles. Um, yeah, tons, tons, tons. So I was showing Carla pictures of this stuff yesterday. Um, yeah, lots and lots. <laughs> Hi, Susan. <clears throat> um, yeah, so that and then that stack. So I paid like, so I got like a bag stuffed full. I got four bags of this fabric, okay? And um, I think altogether I probably spent... I think it was about $30 for all of the fabric that I got. So these are all like florals. Um, these are all like florally ones. So what I'm doing is I'm going to, um, Carla inspired me yesterday. Um, cause I'm like, gosh, what am I going to do with all this fabric? Um, but she inspired me to put together some new kits. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I was really happy with the, the find, um, and all of this. <laughs> yeah, so tons and tons. Um, but anyway, so she kind of inspired me to, uh, go ahead and put together some new kits. And so I think I'm going to do that. And what I'll do is I'll just put together you know, 20 of them, or I might even have enough to do 40, but I think 20 would be a good start. So there's those three like stacks, right? And then all of this <laughs> was, is, is what I wound up with. So see, literally like tons and tons and tons of upholstery fabrics. 
So, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, I just kind of put it out there to the universe and say, you know, um, this is what I'm needing right now. Like, this is what I'm wanting. And I mean, I don't even necessarily verbalize that or anything, right? I'm not, <laughs> um, but I just kind of open my mind and my spirit or whatever to what I'm needing, you know, and, um, have some faith that it's going to come, you know what I mean? And, um, so that's how I wind up finding things like this. Do you know what I mean? And um, it's like I just know that I'm going to, it'll come to me. It's going to come. And I don't know when or how or whatever, but um, it, it seems to work, you know, because I've been wanting to find some upholstery fabric samples, sample books. And, um, yeah, so there we go. Found some. You know what I mean? Just like I bought, um, I don't know if you guys have watched any of my haul videos, like some of my thrift store haul videos. In one of them, I had picked up, oh my gosh, probably 125 or so, uh, stamping up, uh, stamp pads. And a lot of them are, um, are old, you know, and they're a little dried up and stuff. But they're still like usable, you know, like if I, um, yeah, it is nice that it's already processed, right? Um, but anyways, all those stamp pads, they're still usable. Like if I find reinkers for those, um, they're totally usable stamp pads. Absolutely. And I, I got all of them for like $10, you know, and I just know that one of these days I'm going to come across at a thrift store somewhere, a gigantic bag of reinkers. You know what I mean? I did, Brenda. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways. So, I'm going to be making some kits, you guys. And, you know, I don't know how many I should make. Um, I'm going to make them real affordable. Um, I'm thinking probably in the $20 range. Um, maybe $25. I don't know. It depends on how much stuff I wind up, um, putting in them, but I'm just going to do them kind of generic. Like I'm not going to do a real heavily themed type of thing, but I'm definitely going to use a lot of that. Um, a lot of that. Um, yeah, I know Regina. I know some of the pads that I got are older, the older style and some are new. Some are with the felt and then some are with the, I don't know what the difference is, but Anyways, um, so you guys let me know if you're interested in like a kit or something, because I know there's a lot of other YouTubers that do them, but, um, you know, I want to do, um, a lot of that kind of fabric and then even include some of the sorry silk fabric, um, book pages, just all kinds of stuff. And I'll, I'll post a video and show, show you, but I'm not sure how many to make. I don't want to make too many, you know, cause I don't want to have like a bunch of kits laying around, but I guess it's just a gamble anyways. So this was in a book that I got at the thrift store and I want to use some of these images. And so basically I'll show you guys what I do when I'm making these little, these little guys. I don't know if I have my cutting mat. I have a little tiny cutting mat somewhere. And of course I can't find it. Well, I guess I'll just have to use the big one. Now I have fabric like lint everywhere. I don't know if you guys can see on this. Start with 20, you think? 
Yeah, you know, I don't know if I would do... You can put one kit together and show it, and then you can take pre-orders. Yeah, see, that's what I did before with my kits, and I didn't really like that because... I don't know. It was just kind of a hassle to then just, I had to leave everything that I was going to use in the kit. I had to kind of leave it accessible so that I could get to it and just pull everything for the kit real quick. I want to just make them all, have them all ready, have them all put into a big Ziploc bag or something or a box or whatever. And then all I have to do is just put a, um, and just put a, a label on it and ship it. You know what I mean? Do retro color, bohemian color. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Deb, that's a great idea. And, you know, maybe down the road I could do that. But um, I don't want it to get too complicated for me. Like, I just want to, my biggest thing is that is I want to make it like a de-stash kind of kit for me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, so... Basically, for this little frame, um, I just go like to the corner and then I'll trace it. So I'm going to make the back solid. And I just do it in two, I just go ahead and do it in um, two pieces instead of making it like fold it. Okay. So in the center there, I'm going to wind up cutting that, cutting that down. Right. So I'm not tracing this one because I want to leave that solid in the back. So I just trace that side. Okay. So basically just like that. And then I mean, you could just measure that and cut that size paper, right? Um, rather than going through the whole tracing thing. Or you could just cut that size. And then um, I like to do things the hard way sometimes. Um, where's that other? Oh, here it is. Rather than... Um, Tracing it, just cut that sh that size, and then all you'd have to do is trace that part. And once you get one made, then it's a lot. It's pretty easy. You could cut these out on your um, if you have a uh, um, rotary. Uh, paper trimmer, you know, or even if it wasn't a rotary, I guess you could still do that. Um, and then of course I save these because you never know. And then I just go back and, um, round the corners. Yeah, so then I've just got these two pieces. So I have tons of them. Anyways, I want to kind of cut out some um, images to use on these. So I'm actually going to take this off now because it's gigantic. <clears throat> oh, and I want to use some flowers too. Okay, here we go. So these have a bunch of pretty small images of flowers that I can use. Yeah, like those.
So I just take one of the whatever size I'm whatever size I'm working on, get an idea of you know how it's how it's gonna look in there. And then um, what I'll do is I kind of trace around the outside. So I know I have to cut my image out smaller than that. You know, Louise, I don't, um, I, I know I feel bad when I do things like this and I don't have something like that to offer you. Um, I don't even know how to do that, to be honest. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, this phone is driving me crazy. <clears throat> Basically, this is just, if you cut a piece of paper, what's the size on here? So this is four inches by two inches. And then if you fold that in half, so make a, cut a four by two piece of paper, okay? Um, I'm just going to pretend like this is four by two. Okay. So then you could just fold this in half, right? And then what you would do is you would just measure in a quarter of an inch there and like a quarter of an inch here. And that's just so that you could get a straight line, right? And then a quarter of an inch from each side twice so that you can get your frame. And this would be a way for you to just make your own template, I guess, you know, like another quarter of an inch. If you want the, the frame to be a little bit narrower, then go an eighth of an inch or something, you know. So I'm doing that around... Can you guys see what I'm doing? Sort of. I know it's not zoomed in either. So basically I just made a bunch of dots on here, but I'm going to connect them and so it you wind up with something like that, right? And then you could cut it out with the, um, hi, Laura, you made it. Uh, well, I, I'm glad you asked that, Lu Louise, because I, you know, yeah. <laughs> but that would be just a real easy way to make the, um, to make a little frame. And then this could be your template. So what are you doing, Laura? Happy anniversary. So then, just a piece of, um, I have to get all the lint off of it. It's just white glue. If it'll work. Yeah. I think that glue is too thick for this, this thing. Need to water it down a little bit, I think. Oh, well. just going to use my glue all. <clears throat> I know 37 years. That's crazy. Just crazy, Laura. Sounds like you have a pretty amazing hubby though. Helps if you open the glue.
Only thing I can say about this is, and I kind of did here, is you want to not use a lot of glue, right? Because if it smushes out into the frame, that's not pretty. And I'm just adding a t couple little drops because really I just need to tack this down. It doesn't have to be like perfect, you know. Eh. That. And then here's my back. I probably could just do this with a glue stick too, you know. It doesn't have to be wet glue or whatever. Yeah, and then it's just a little framed image. Here. <laughs> <clears throat> You made it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a piece of salad, a tile, and a cluster. That's super funny. <laughs> yeah, so I want to do some of these little teeny ones because I have a bunch of them cut out. And so, you know, if you want to make little teeny ones, basically you just have to use your math skills and, you know, kind of reduce everything a little bit, you know, and, um, yeah, cut everything just a little bit smaller. So, and I saved the little cutouts cause, oh, you know what? That's what I actually wound up making these with. I think were the cutouts from the larger ones. <laughs> I can't throw away pieces of paper. I just can't do it. Anyway, so cut my acetate down a little bit. Yeah, I wish I could get that glue to work in that um other little fine line applicator, but I think I messed up and I got the, the finer point applicator bottles or I just can't use the glue that I used glue all in it, but, and I use glue all lately for some reason. I don't know why, but I just, I think it's, it's cheaper. It's a little bit cheaper than Aileen. So that's why. Let's see. I like this butterfly. Nope. Like that one. Yeah, Susan, that's what I'm thinking. I'm just going to water it down a little bit, but I don't want to do that at the moment. Yeah, I'll just thin it down a little bit with some water. And that's too much glue. Yeah, because I just want to tack it down, like on the corners, you know? Kind of move it into place. There. And I could like let this dry before I put the back on it, but I'm not gonna. If you have nothing to do with 
you know, if you have no, absolutely nothing to do, make these. Just saying. <laughs> and then I like to go back and, like, um, let me see if I can find some of the ones that I... These are, like, right up your alley, Carla. Just saying. With your buttons, you know, and... Let's see. Well, anyways, I like to go around them sometimes with, like, um... Uh, liquid leaf metallic paint or um, uh, ink of gold or you know something like that and you don't have to put the acetate in it you know I mean obviously you don't have to do anything but um, <laughs> I just like the way it looks I think it makes it look like geez somebody really spent a lot of time doing that you know the details, right? Hi, Myrna. How's it going? <laughs> uh, wait. Oh, whoops. Somebody was asking me something and I missed it. What was that? Of oh, the flower book. Oh, <laughs> the name of the flower book? This book. It's Garden Flowers in Color is the name of it. And there's actually a few different ones. Um, this is the one that was published like in the seventies. Okay. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm bad about that. Um, this one was published sometime in the seventies. I don't have the cover, so I don't know, but I will tell you that this is my other favorite book that's called Garden Flowers in Color. And this is published by Daniel Foley. Now there's another one of these that is published or that's put together by uh I think his name is Stevens. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> so there's actually two, there's three books that are called Garden Flowers in Color. I don't have the cover to show you this one. Okay. But um anyway, this one is done by G.A. Stevens, and it's a little bit different, although these two books do share some of the same images, okay? This is the Foley one, and this is the Stevens one, and <clears throat> they share some of the same images, which I think is interesting, so I'm kind of curious about why that is. Like, I'm wondering if maybe this... <laughs> So the G.A. Stevens ones, I think, are all in the early, or like in the late 30s. But then a lot of the Foley ones go all the way up to through the 40s. And I think even some early 50s. And so I'm thinking that Foley probably took, oh, like, it, it, it's like the same book, really. But maybe he just edited it and did it different and added different images or something. But um, I have a couple copies of the Stevens one. And I really like it because the flowers are just gorgeous. You know what I'm saying? Um, I Some of the flowers in the Stevens, um, the Stevens one are just more, I think, magnificent, you know. And also more painterly like a lot of these images you can tell have been retouched and painted um rather than just being a photograph you know like they've been colorized so anyways lots of flower books but i would say that the stevens one which is the older ones um i like the best of the three um and then i so i was searching for these on on ebay and that's when I came across this one. And so I bought it because I was like, wow, you know, um, just in the images that the seller showed, it looked like there was a lot of good flower images. And so when I bought it, it was turned out like it was probably 60% of the book is actual images. So, yeah. So I need to get another one of these so that I can have the back of each page too. So... <laughs> Anyways, let me use this little butterfly too. Actually, it's a moth. Just 
just have a little bit of glue on my finger here. I don't remember where I got these from. These came out of some book that I got at Barnes & Noble. I can't remember the name of it. So, I mean, I could coat these. I could, one thing that I'm thinking I could do, or you could do, or whoever, um, is not use the acetate, assemble this whole thing, and then just coat it with triple thick, like the whole entire thing. And then you could make it into like a little charm or something, you know, which I might do. I might do that. Um, you could add like a little word in here, or you could even add... Um, like a little fussy cut butterfly behind the acetate or something. You know, I've been doing that a lot lately too. Kind of layering um, things in behind the acetate on different projects. So this has like a little, I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little dragonfly and a carnation. And I just think it's really cute. Oh, she did, Myrna, really? Oh, that's cool. When when was that? I wouldn't. <laughs> I would like to see that. She's so awesome. I love Tracy Fox. She's so cool. I follow her on Instagram, and she's always really, really supportive. And um, she has such great ideas, and I love watching her methodology. You know, just the way that she puts things together and that kind of stuff. So I actually have had her channel linked in all of my video descriptions for quite a while now for months. So yep, she's pretty cool. Okay, I think I might have watched it or I might have been watching it when, um, okay, that would be great. I think I might have been watching it um, before I started my live stream because I was watching her one of her videos. So that's why I was asking if, you know, which one it was, because it might be the one I was watching. She's, she's pretty funny though. When she, she gets like, um, kind of like, I don't know. I think it's funny when she starts a video and then she'll start it over like so many times, you know, I think I've done that a few times, but I've just gotten to that point where I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> like, I don't even care. It just is what it is, you know. Anyways. So, yeah. Oops. What happened to the acetate? I guess I didn't put acetate on this one. Oh, well. No big deal. So, there's no acetate on this one. But maybe I'll coat it with triple thick. Oh, with shingles. That's right. My son has shingles. He gets shingles. Um, he had uh, chicken pox when he was little and yeah, he gets, he gets shingles too. It's really painful. He said, so yeah. And it can take a while to, you know, recover when you have an outbreak and it never goes away. That's the thing about shingles that is just terrible is it, it doesn't go away and stress brings it on. So it's pretty painful. Hi, Alex. You know what some chunks are by any chance? Bright red ones? Mm-mm. <laughs> um, I haven't seen them. Okay. Sorry. Love you. Love you, too. <clears throat> okay. It's enough bugs. It's enough bugs. I do like these bigger butterflies though. 
It's like I don't want to waste any of these images, you know? <laughs> it's always such a hard decision, like which ones to sacrifice when doing this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to sacrifice any of them. Um, wait, I'm gonna use some. Of, I'm gonna use some of these. I haven't used any of these. I'm gonna save these. I can't. I can't bring myself to waste any of these little images. So I'm gonna save these for tiles, and then I don't have to sacrifice any of them. Same with these guys. They're so cute. Look at them. They're so tiny. Oh, that would be awesome if she did a live stream. Um, uh, what's her name? Oh my gosh, I always forget her first name from Shabby Dabby Do. Um, oh gosh, what's her name? Tina. She, she um, <laughs> she's starting to get her nerve up to do a live stream too. I think, I mean, I don't know, but <laughs> I've kind of, kind of suggested it a few times and I told her that I would moderate for her and stuff like if she wants to do it. So yeah, well, I hope that she does. I hope she does. That would be rad. Let's see. Okay. I'm not going to do little teenies. I'm going to do a couple of these. Yeah, see, some of these I made uh, folded. So I'll work on one of those. Um, just to measure the size. Yeah, perfect. My son just just got here with my granddaughter. They're going to swim. In case you're wondering what all of the noise is all about. Yeah, I love these little guys. I love these little, they're almost like charms, you know. And, um. Yeah, you can use them for lots of different things. I kind of, I don't know, I get kind of hoardish with them. Like I don't want to, I don't want to share them sometimes. <laughs> but, but eventually I do. And it's just because they're kind of, you know, a lot to make them. You know what I mean? So, but I have used them in some of my journals and stuff. <clears throat> yeah, she's, she's pretty sweet, huh, Laura? Hi, Vicki. How have you been, Vicki? Does not take much glue, you know, to just hold down a little piece of uh, acetate. So let's see. I like that little beetle. And this is a page out of an encyclopedia that I got from Carla.
I actually pulled that up so that I could have some of the words in there in the bottom, you know. So my granddaughter has this big giant, like, it's like a um, Pegasus unicorn thing, right? It's a floaty. It's this gigantic floaty that's in our pool. And she named it Popcorn. And um, <laughs> I feel a little weird calling it Popcorn. So, um, and the name of the encyclopedia. Oh my gosh. I have no idea. Carla, what's the name of the encyclopedia that you sent me, like, a few copies of? A few, uh, what do you call them? A few of the letters. Oh, I have a couple of them that I haven't torn up. Let me look. It's a really old encyclopedia. Oh, my gosh. I got to get rid of some of these books. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's this um, Compton's Pictured Encyclopedia and Fact 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 Index. <laughs> yeah, 1947. Yeah, it's an old dictionary. So it has some pretty cool um, images, and I love the text in the in these. She's good to me. Carla's good to me. I love old encyclopedias and old reference books and old textbooks. Really old textbooks are, are really, really cool, especially math books or like biology or I don't know, old textbooks. I also want to do um I'm going to do one more of these, but then I also want to just do some like um I want to work on some of these envelopes. I want to make some more like um decoupaged um coin envelopes and put like some book paper on them and that kind of thing. So I might do that while you guys are hanging out with me, if you don't mind. Okay, now I need an image for this. Let's see. I like that little B right there. Or how about I kind of like that, just the little berries, maybe. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. With the words. With some of the words in it. I think this came from the encyclopedia. So I just, you know, turn to look at the front just to make sure it's, you know, lined up how I want. I do like to have some of the words now. I think that's kind of cool. So, And then after these dry, which doesn't take that long, after they dry, I'll come back and, um, you know, ink around the edges. And if they need to be tacked down just a little bit more um, with glue and stuff, they become a little bit more durable, like they don't you know, that the, the pieces won't slide around or anything. So I kind of like to just get them put together so that they can dry and then I can come back and like work on them a little more if I need to. So let's see. I do like these little teeny ones though. Let's see. Need a little piece of acetate.
And I mean, at least it dries clear. So a little bit, of, if a little bit of it kind of squishes in there, it's not like the end of the world, right? There. Oh, and in case anybody's curious, um, Momo is recovering very quickly um, from her extractions. She had teeth, some teeth pulled. Um, you like the flower book? Better by Stevens. You know, yeah, I kind of do. I, so, I sort of do uh, like it a little bit better um, just because I like the images. The images in the Stevens one are a little bit more painterly. And they're also, a lot of them are, are larger. So um, you get more pages where just like the whole page is full of flowers, you know. Um, yeah, the paper in those in those encyclopedias is delicious. So, <laughs> um, no, I don't save the acetate from packaging. I do, but that's not what this is. Um, this is actually from, you came in a little late, huh, Laura? This is actually just the Duralar um, acetate. I get this at Michael's. I did want to do maybe... I like these little images from, um, these came out of a, um, this like church, um, almost like a yearbook kind of book that was from like their church had been in existence since 1890. And I think that the little booklet came out in 1940. So it was like 50 years of their um, congregation and like a um, kind of like a, um, a memory book or something from their church, con you know, the, the members and a lot of pictures and stuff of, of the members. And this was a, like a Sunday school class or something. So Anyways, but I like the images. I thought they would be kind of cool to use on tiles and, and little lockets and stuff. And I actually got two copies of that book. So <laughs> um, I'm not going to use acetate on this because this one I'd like to use as a tile or like a, um, like a charm. And I'm going to coat it with triple thick. So I'm not putting acetate on this one. I mean, you could coat it with acetate, but I don't really think it would work that well. I want to do some stuff with that, um, um, I want to make some more stuff with that resin, like the epoxy resin. I've done some furniture and stuff. Um, that two-part like epoxy, it's like a bar top coating is what they call it sometimes. Or um, it's like two pieces, two parts you mix together. Um, I'm going to start playing with that a little bit. Anyway, so yeah, so she turned out kind of cute. So once that dries, then I'll coat it with triple thick. <laughs> yes, Laura, mass quantities. 
<laughs> yep. Let's see. Yeah, see, here's some of the other images out of that book. See, they're just... I mean, you just never know where you're going to find usable... Like, I love these ones. <laughs> just, you know, just people in the 40s. Just hanging out. Some of the portraits are neat, you know. And those can be just, like, look at her. Isn't she sweet? Oh, I love all these little baby pictures. There's all these cute baby pictures in there. Oh, there's a bunch more. <laughs> anyway, Sunday school, you know. So yeah, I happened to get two of these from the um, from the thrift store yesterday, or maybe it was the day before I went to the thrift store. I can't remember. So yeah, I think I'm going to get kits put together. I'm going to probably work on that tonight. And um, like I said, I'm going to try to make them right around $20, $25. But I can tell you that they're going to be, they're going to be generous. Okay. Like I'm not messing around. Like I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm seriously trying to do some de-stashing while I'm doing that, you know? Um, so lots of different types of paper and lots and lots of different book pages. I'm going to break into some of my kids' books, some of my children's books and, um, you know, include some pages out of some of those and maybe even some little golden books and stuff like that. I think I'm going to do, uh, um, just like, I'm just going to put a sewing pattern in each kit um, with the instructions, the cover, and the um, the uh, pattern tissue and everything. Like, I'm just going to put the whole thing in there um, because I have so many. So, yeah, I'm, I'm at that point, guys. I need to get rid of some stuff. And, you know, it's all... It's all cool, usable stuff, but I doubt if I'm going to use it all. <laughs> yeah, Vicki, I'm going to put together a kit. And it's just going to be kind of a, um all-purpose junk journal kit. It's um, not with a theme, not a color theme or anything like that. Um, I will say that it's going to be more of a more retro. I wouldn't call it necessarily um, vintage. Um, when I think vintage, I think, uh, you know, technically vintage is, if you go by Etsy's, um, you know, definition, <clears throat> anything that's more than 15 years old is vintage. So, um, you know, you can't really say something is not vintage if it's more than 15 years old because, well, I guess it kind of is. But to me, I consider vintage pre-70s, you know, 70s is still vintage, but I consider that to be just my own thing, you know, I consider that to be more retro, you know, um, from say like the mid seventies forward, um, through like the nineties, I would call that retro prior to that. I would say, um, that would be vintage to me. So, um, so these are going to be, um, uh, more retro slash slightly vintage, <laughs> but yeah.
So yeah, like a lot of the book pages um, that I'm planning on putting in there are not um, really, really old books. Um, like if I do a vintage kit, it's going to have stuff like this. I got these at the thrift store the other day or yesterday. Maybe it was the day before yesterday that I went to the thrift store. I can't remember. But um, look at these. A bolero dress for the big girl. <laughs> I love that. Look. Wouldn't these, these would be fun for people who make um, like paper dolls, I think. I never... Um, I've never made paper dolls. But yeah, this these are uh, women's women's home companion. Um, this one is 1915. So this is the oldest of the three. They have these marked at twelve dollars each, and she showed them to me. And she always shows me the stuff that she thinks I would like that they've you know that they have in, but um. Anyway, she marked them half half that for me, so I got them for six dollars a piece, less thirty percent. So, um, clothes for stout women here. <laughs> they need to have a section of for fluffy women. Yeah, isn't this pretty? It's really neat. I I love old advertising. It's just so. Anyways, this. I would consider definitely vintage, right? This is not retro. This is super vintage. Anyways, so I got three of those. And since these are old enough, I can copy this stuff, you know. I can copy it and use it, reproduce it. So I'm going to put this stuff aside and I want to do some of these envelopes, you guys. And I might, you know, put some of those flower images on um, some of these envelopes. I'm telling you, since I finished that journal, I'm just like so relieved. Like I feel like the world's been lifted off my shoulders. But I like to do this kind of stuff in between journals, you know, um, it just kind of gets me thinking about what I'm going to do and, you know, how to go about it, you know, um, where's my box? So these are for tiles. So those are going somewhere else. here. Yeah, so I didn't do too many today, but I've got my box out, so I'll work on doing some more of those later. But I kind of wanted to just show those to you guys because they're kind of fun. Um, and I've been keeping like my little envelope templates and stuff in here too. Um, some of these like real small little envelopes, I like to, you know, copy them. So these I'm just going to set over here. Let them dry. But yeah, so I'll put buttons and, um, you know, things that you can use as clasps and ribbon. And I have tons, tons of lace trims that I'm going to use. Um, so yeah, that is a good question, Susan. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not like 
you know, a copyright attorney, but um, I think it's prior to 19, I think it has to be 100 years old, but it depends on what it is. If it's advertising, it doesn't have to be that old. What I would say is just Google, um, yeah, absolutely, Vicki. What I would do is just Google it. You know, how old, um, you know, can I copy, uh, you know, picture, a picture from 1955 or stuff like that. Like I, like I said, advertising is different. Like advertising, um, I don't think it has to be that old. Honestly, um, I think it only has to be something like, like 50 years maybe, but it's different. So don't take my, you know, word for it. But, um, I've asked that same question in other, um, chat chats. Like I asked that question in, uh, in Shelly's chat one time and it's really hard to get a straight answer. Uh, the best thing to do is to just Google it. But I feel like I'm safe with those because for one thing, they're advertising and they're prior to 1923. I think the magic year is 1923. Anything older than that, you can reproduce it. Um, they become public domain is what the, the terminology is. So a lot of the stuff that you see like in graphics fairy and that kind of thing, those are all public domain images. Um, you know, a lot of, um, the, well, almost all of the images on vintage.com, it's V-I-I-N-T-A-G-E.com, all of those are public domain images, and, you know, there's no more copyright on them, so you can use them, you know, and there's tons of that stuff out there in the world, you guys, tons. You know, the thing about using something, I mean, you can use stuff, like I could just cut up that magazine, and even if if it was copyrighted, I could cut that magazine up and I could use that in my art, um, reproducing it and selling it as mine is totally different story. Like I'm not going to cut those images out, scan them and say, Hey, look at, I created these images. You know, that's a different type of copyright thing. You know, um, I'm talking about something newer, like where if there was a copyright on it, like if it wasn't public domain, if it's something like from the seventies and it's like a Marlboro advertisement and you want to make copies of it and sell it, I have a feeling that probably would not be okay. You know, especially if you were saying, look at, this is my image and I'm copying it and selling it. Like you can't do that. Not with something that is not public domain. Anyways, I know that's probably even way more confusing. <laughs> Susan, that's funny. Yeah, Google. <laughs> don't get me started. I don't know. I guess the answer is I don't know exactly, but I do know you're safe if it's before 1923. Sorry, I don't know. Do you guys ever use the um, masking paper? Hi, Scotty. I haven't seen you for a while. How you doing? Um, well, I guess I haven't live streamed for at least a week, huh? <clears throat> How are you feeling? Yeah, do you guys ever use that masking paper from the, like, the paint store? You know, the paint section at, um... Home Depot comes in a big roll. See, <laughs> it's a giant roll of paper. Um, I use it for my, um, they make it in all different sizes too. Like you can buy like a nine inch roll or 12 inch or 18 inch or whatever. Hi, Amber. <clears throat> um, I use it for wrapping my, um, like journals before I, I ship them. And, um, yeah, it's really great for packing, but also as pages in journals. So anyways, yeah, I want to do some of these. So I just took and cut the, um, basically just cut the flap off of one of these and made like a little template. 
for that. I don't know. I might use some of these flowers on here. When I do this, I like to use stuff that's not super heavy, though. I like to use paper that's not really, really thick. And those pages are kind of thick. So I'm going to use some of this. Um, this is the French Dictionary. Just taking a signature off of here. I could probably cut a couple at one time. Really, the you know, the only part that is a real pain is that. Um, that curve. And of course, I can't even see it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it was super hard to see it. Oh, wait, I'm going to use something darker. I might start in some new journals later on tonight. I have some that I kind of have put together, but not a hundred percent. Um, like I have all of the papers for the signatures just kind of together in them, but I haven't stitched anything together or anything like that. So If it, yeah, perfect. And then I'll, so I'll do a couple of these and then I'll go back and like decoupage some flower images over the top of that and stuff like that. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh, Susan, you scared me. <laughs> oh, Scotty, you're so cute. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm going to do this with glue stick. I like to use the glue stick because the biggest reason is because it doesn't like um it's it'll stay flat. You know, it won't like bubble. Ah.
And then I can come back and just trim the edges. And I'll probably do something on that side too. Maybe. I don't always because I like to use these as pockets in books. So. Maybe. Yeah, what the heck? For Wednesday afternoon? My goodness. That's pretty rad. I'm glad you all decided to come and hang out. I just have to think of stuff to do with these envelopes, you know. <laughs> I got so many of them. And I'll put some of these in the kits too. Both sizes. Um, yeah, I'll put some of these in each one. Do some playing cards and I pulled out some, you know, Rolodex cards. All kinds of different cards and tons of... Um, like notepads. Um, I want to, I don't think I'm going to put anything that I've already coffee dyed in there. I'll leave that up to the, you know, purchaser to do their, their own coffee dyeing or whatever. But, um, yeah, I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> It should be fun. And I'm just going to get each kit all assembled and all together and ready to go. And then, um, yeah. And then I'll see how that goes. And if that goes smoothly for me, then I'm going to think about doing some more like theme journals, like some vintage ones or um, that kind of thing. I don't know if I'll ever get into doing color themes. Um, just because that's just not really me, but, um, you know, you never know. So yeah, I'm doing like three pages at a time here. And I'm just going to use the book, the text as my like guide on here <laughs> for the bottom. And where are my actual books? There they are. See, that's the only reason I hate doing more than one, cu cutting one more than one at a time is they always wind up going crooked like that. And this paper is really, really thin from this dictionary, so so I can add some more stuff on top of it, and I don't feel like the envelope will be too thick. Yeah, see, in the... I did the backs on on these too. I guess this I did a napkin decoupage over it, but it just started out just applying um, just the paper, you know, and then I did the napkin. Yeah, and this one is just book paper. This is the aircraft maintenance book on here. Hello, Lynn. I'm just trying to see. I haven't looked at the chat for a little while, guys. Sorry. Sorry. 
Yeah, if you have a second, give me a quick thumbs up if you don't mind. And I'm pretty sure I'll get at least one thumbs down. So <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, I think there's, I don't know, like there must be just like one person that just goes around and just thumbs down like at least one time on everybody's video. I've noticed that. It's like there's at least one thumbs down. I think it's probably just like a particular person that does that. I don't know. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but that's what I think. <laughs> I think it's just like some person that's decided to do that as like their pastime. They just go around and like do like a thumbs down on every video they can find. You guys don't know how much, how relieved I am to have that journal done. <laughs> Seriously. Do you guys want to see it? I could show it to you. I guess I could show it to you. I'll just send her a message and say, hey, don't watch my live stream. Hi, Carol. <laughs> You guys want to see it? I'm actually. Wait, I got one already. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> okay, I have to go get it. I have to go get it. <clears throat> Let me do this, just this last one of these, and then I'll go grab it. I'm actually kind of curious to see what you guys think about it. She said that, you know, she really wanted a lot of, like, um, tuck spots and, um, you know, like, I don't know. It's hard. Doing custom stuff is hard because, I don't know, like, you just don't really know, like, if they're going to like it or, you know, if it's going to satisfy their fantasy about what they want, you know, and that kind of thing. And, and it's kind of stifling in a way. And so I've kind of decided I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. Anyways, okay, I'll go grab it. I'll be right back. Oh my God, that big giant roll of paper almost landed on my foot. <laughs> 